This was a strange service call. The office had baseboard copper radiation along the outside walls, a non-programmable thermostat in one office controlled a valve supplying heat for the zone. The thermostat was set for 70 degrees and had a lockbox covering it. A relatively simple heating system, right? The manager said the offices were freezing. When I arrived, all the offices were around 64 degrees, except for one, the office with the thermostat. It was at 72 degrees. There must be a heater in that room, I thought, but I didn't see one. How could a room be so warm and the rooms next to it cold? Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel, where I share my knowledge and experience troubleshooting boiler issues. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you find these videos helpful. In a school building, the boiler was right below a classroom. The boiler sooted, and the flue pipe got really hot. It was so hot, the floor tiles in the classroom buckled. But these offices are on the ground level, and there's no boiler underneath. Perhaps it was due to the sun shining in. No, they had shades on the windows. What caused the temperature to be so much warmer in that room? The manager, Mary Ann, caught me in the hall and said, See, the offices are freezing. I was going to explain to her that 64 degrees was not freezing, but decided to table that conversation for a later time. I don't get it. The office with the thermostat is at 72 and the others are around 64. It's the same pipe feeding all the rooms. Can you fix it, she asked. I'm working on it. I would swear there was a space heater in that room. Something is making it warm. Space heaters are not permitted in the office, Mary Ann said, and I nodded. There were signs in the common area warning against using space heaters. Can you just close the valve to that room, the manager asked. The offices are all on the same pipe, and there's only one valve, I informed her. Let me know what can be done, the manager said, and I told her I would. After verifying the dampers were open on all the fin tube radiation, I checked the thermostat. The woman in the office, Mrs. Williams, was the owner's mother. You're not going to turn it down, are you, she asked. No, I'm trying to figure out how your office is the only warm one, I assured her. The thermostat worked properly. When I turned the thermostat down, the valve closed. It opened when I turned the thermostat up. I checked the calibration on the thermostat, and it was off by a few degrees. To satisfy my curiosity, Mary Ann and I went inside the office with the thermostat after everyone left to check for a heater. Just as Mary Ann suggested, there wasn't a heater. My suggestion to Mary Ann was to place a couple of temperature data loggers in the offices to trend the temperatures, and she agreed. A data logger was placed in Mrs. Williams' office with the thermostat, and one was placed in the office at the end of the piping run. A few days later, I stopped by, and Mary Ann said they had the same issue. Downloading the data from the temperature data loggers confused me even more. Each morning, the temperature difference started around 9 a.m., and it widened as the day went on. In the evenings, the temperatures evened out between the rooms. Around 9 a.m., the cycle started again. I've seen many creative ways people use to try fooling the thermostat, from placing an ice pack next to the thermostat to get more heat, or a heat lamp facing it to get less heat. I couldn't find any evidence of either. In this case, only one room was noticeably warmer than the rest. Something was generating heat in that room, and I wanted to find out what it was. I went into the office when Mrs. Williams was at lunch. As soon as I walked in, I noticed the temperature difference. I scanned the entire office, then heard a buzzing sound. Looking under her desk, I found the source of the noise, a portable electric heater. I snapped a photo with my cell and left, showing Mary Ann the picture she said, well, I can't very well discipline the boss's mother, can I? How can I keep Mrs. Williams satisfied and not freeze the rest of the people, Marianne asked aloud. I could move the thermostat to another office, I suggested, and she nodded and smiled. 
Mrs. Williams will bring in the heater every morning and take it home every evening. It's funny what people will do to stay warm or cool. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com focuses on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is FireIceHeat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. I've authored 12 boiler books and they're available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in many of these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.